Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Informatica World. We are on our penultimate segment. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, for this segment, we're talking about really one of the most, the favorite topics of theCUBE, which is ESG. Yes, I, I mean, I think, again, we're continuing in that theme, uh, we have our other co-host with us, <laughs> who's back for his third segment, uh, which is great, because I think Informatica really has invested in this and really sees that this is not, irrespective of where you are in your politics, this is something we all need to take seriously, especially with AI and data centers, power, water, it's one AI planet. AI is resource intensive, yes, that's for and sure. it's one planet. Well, speaking of that, I'd like to welcome our, our next guest, Levent Ergen. He is the Global Chief ESG Sustainability Strategist and Global Head of ESG Strategic Alliance Partnerships at Informatica. Yeah, that is a long title. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Rob, you're that right. Was very good. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, uh, Thank Levent. You. Thank you so much for coming on. So, we're talking in this segment about the implications of Claire GPT on ESG sustainability data management, but before we even go there, let's back up and, and really talk about why this is such an urgent issue for organizations right at this moment in time. Yeah, thank you. So um, thanks and uh, glad to be here for the third time. <laughs> thank you, Rob. And uh, so yeah, I mean, when we back up um, and, and take a look at where this all started, um, with the Paris Agreement signed in 2015 by 191 nations. The goal was to limit global warming to one and a half degrees so that we avoid any harsh climate change. That was the goal. Unfortunately, we've already hit that point last year. And what we are now seeing as a result is more and more extreme weather events. And certainly, when I reflect on my own life, when I first heard about these topics, it used to sound like an ethereal topic that scientists spoke about and none of us could directly relate to it. But now I'm sure all of us can relate to it directly with heat waves, hailstorms, and, and some form of extreme weather events that are very close to our lives. So what this is then translated into, which is really the sense of urgency here, is the G7 and the G20 um, uh, uh, regulators have made ESG disclosures mandatory. Now, again, bit of a politicized topic, however, um, when we look at the World Economic Forum, they've put extreme weather events as the number one business risk in their global risks report for 2024. So now, climate change is really a board level topic. It's a physical risk and it's real. So um, with the SEC's disclosures um, due in uh, January of next year, certainly in the US and in Europe, corporate sustainability reporting directive going live again in January of next year, um, there's, a, there's a huge sense of urgency, uh, a sense of urgency, companies need to get prepared, and um, you know, ultimately uh, it's uh, about doing the right thing, and, and it's also about um, making sure that uh, as a business, you can take the right mitigating actions for things like climate risk. And you're abiding by the law with these new regulations coming down too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we were talking about the fact that, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday, it, it, it's really about that risk aspect of it and being able to you know, protect yourself and your company, but also do right for the planet and understand, because if you don't know what your risk is or where the, your hot topic areas are, you can't solve for it. And yeah. to me, that's a data problem. I mean, that, and I know we've been talking about in the other two sessions, understanding where, where that comes from and how that comes together would seem like, again, a reason why Informatica has kind of doubled down in this area and had some product announcements in this area as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, we launched Intelligent Data Management for ESG Sustainability last year at Informatica World, so Amit um, announced that. And certainly we've been adding more innovations um, to that and um, you know, I'm definitely going to touch on some of those uh, in this session. And um, one of the interesting things that you made me uh, kind of reflect on right now is um, there's a concept of single materiality and double materiality, and now I want to kind of simplify that and, and what that means. So in the US, 
Um, we are aligned to SASB, uh, which is Sustainability Accounting Standard, Standards Board, which is around single materiality, meaning what are the impacts of the environment social governance ESG, such as like climate risk, on our business? However, in Europe, there's the concept of double materiality, which is what are the impacts of our company on the environment, the people, and the planet? Now, for companies that are headquartered in the US that has legal entities in Europe, they need to do double materiality. So this is where um, you, know, you need intensive data. So when we look at um, Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, there is over 1,400 KPIs that you need to look at. And you need to do a materiality assessment to understand based on the industry vertical you're in, which ones apply to you so that you can then you know, report on those things. And uh, yeah, so th th this is very data intensive and um, you need to be able to evidence everything you do with data to not only mitigate the risks of greenwashing, but to also have you know, ESG audit ready data for your ESG disclosures. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to me, and, and we were talking about this off air, it was the fact that, I was not even joking, I was asked by a global 50 company, what is the most sustainable cloud to go put your stuff in and to do AI in? And I, I, I was sitting there and I'm like, well, that's an interesting, I'm like, I don't even know how to answer that question because sustainability varies so greatly. And, and cloud is just another another data center, it's another, op it's really an operating model that could be on-prem or in somebody else's data center. What are you seeing with how people are looking at normalizing? Because the, the data is, and we were just talking about it with, you know, around, with De Deloitte about this, is normalizing the data and trying to say, okay, I'm getting it from this, this supplier, I'm getting it from this supplier, and maybe it doesn't have everything I need and I'm trying to work with that supplier to get all of that data into, and then I got to put it all into the same format to now you know, satisfy the SEC or one of the governments or the EU or whoever I, I need to send these reports to. How is what you're doing and where the product set is going with Claire GPT and others that are really helping in that, in that effort, I guess you could say. Great question. So um, let's double click into greenhouse gas emissions, which is you know, really the E of ESG, yeah. the main, main topic there. And if we double click into greenhouse gas emissions um, to give a um, relevant example, just like you have accounting standards, you might have IFRS, US GAAP, you, know, you need to have carbon accounting standards and for that we have the greenhouse gas protocol. That's kind of like your gold, gold, golden standard. And um, to even double click into the greenhouse gas protocol, you have, as you alluded in the previous session, your scope one, two, and three, scope one being you know, your direct operations and anything you burn and what comes out of pipes. Scope two is indirect emissions, such as like purchased electricity, what did the grid produce in terms of carbon. And then scope three, which is the biggest challenge, which is your carbon emissions in your supply chain, which makes up more than 80% of the carbon footprint for companies, where they might be using a cloud provider and they need to understand their carbon footprint of the, carbon, uh, of the cloud provider because it's in their uh, scope three, right? So at Informatica, you know, what we've done is build a data model that aligns to the greenhouse gas protocol so that we can do all the heavy lifting around collecting this data. Now, to be able to collect this data, you need to look at your purchasing activity, which lives in your ERP systems. And when we talk to a multinational, each line of business is using a different system, sometimes multiple versions of that. So maybe they'll have 20 versions of SAP in one line of business. In another one, they might be using Ariba. In another one, they might be using Cooper. In another one, they might be using Oracle. So how do you go about understanding the purchasing data which lives in your materials master in all of your ERP systems, then consolidate that at a legal entity level and then at a group consolidated level? That's a massive data challenge. And we have lots of connectors that can look at the data model, 
at source, replicate it at the target, move it across, and then start enriching that with all of the ESG data that you need. And when we think about supply chains, most of our customers have got more than 20,000 suppliers in our supply chain. Wow. And this is how we accelerate the risk assessment process by leveraging ESG rating agencies such as Dun & Bradstreet, yep. where they give us access to 80 million public and private company records so that we can rapidly pull that to a centralized place for our customers who can then leverage that data for their actual ESG disclosures. Yeah, and, and I think you just hit on something that light bulb went off in my head is, there's different verticals, and in Informatica talks to different verticals. What, is, what, are the, what are some of the challenges across different verticals, and how do, how do you bring it home for them? Yeah, so great question. Let's start with the financial services, which is the most regulated uh, industry, and uh, they were the first ones to start, because you know, when you want to create a positive wave of change, you do that with the financial system, right? It's the big dam, you get wholesale funding from your central banks, wholesale, wholesale line of credit, then banks turn that into products and they give that to the market. So the challenge for the financial system is what we call financed emissions, meaning what is the carbon footprint of the different asset classes that they are financing? And this is where you know, companies need to be able to understand, let's say if they've invested in a security, what is the carbon footprint of that security? So that's where we have our secu uh, securities master, master data management, enrich that with you know, carbon emissions data. Then everything in the non-financial services sector, um, any, th any uh, industry vertical with a supply chain is facing this massive scope three challenge. Yeah, yeah, like CPG, yeah. Retail CPG, yeah. you know, life sciences in sourcing the various ingredients of, of their, you know, treatments, and, and even healthcare with all of the different, you know, uh, supply chain implications there. So um, this is certainly a cross industry challenge, but each of them have got different, what we call materiality factors or different areas of concentrated ESG risks. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about uh, a few further innovations that Informatica is working on, particularly as it relates to the real differences that, you're, that you just described earlier in terms of North American regulations and European regulations, and frankly, really diff the differences in outlook of these two regions of the world in, in terms of how they think about the very real risks of climate risk in terms of, is it my business that I'm worried about or is it um, my, the, the, my business and its impact on the environment? Great question. So, um, if we reflect on the latest SEC ruling, um, it scaled back the requirements compared to Europe. So in the US, it's now only scope one and two, but in Europe, it's also s scope three, which is, car which is the carbon emissions in the supply chain. Now, for a multinational that has legal entities in North America and, and Europe, they need to do the whole shebang. And um, the latest innovations um, that we are enabling for our customers um, is the ability to be able to tap into geospatial remote sensing data where you can get real live um, information from space about these climate risks that are developing. So what that allows you to do is then see your um, uh, r risks on a T plus 30 day timeline, which is you know, approaching very quickly, um, to all the way out to 2050. So what, what this enables companies to be able to do is um, depending on the industry vertical, for example, insurance is you know, one of the heaviest hit sectors. We certainly um, had the capital stress testing reveal that. But uh, for every other industry vertical for supply chains, you could start to understand if one of your suppliers is going to be hit by a hurricane or some kind of a um, extreme weather event so that you can think about what alternate sourcing you're going to do. And all of these types of things are essentially not going to only help with business resilience, but also unlock innovation. So using climate risks for innovating in their actual industries. Amazing, amazing. Well, Levant, this has been so interesting and, and really a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for returning to theCUBE to share your insights. <laughs> yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah. 
I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. Stay tuned for one last segment of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.